So today um, I'm going to kick things off this morning talking about using PebblePad for professional development in universities and I want to thank Tracy who inadvertently gave me an amazing segue to this particular part of the presentation. We can't expect students to do things that we're not doing ourselves. So the more that we integrate the use of portfolios in the professional sense in universities, the more we're able to model the use of portfolios to students. And again, some of you may remember yesterday, one of my favourite words is normalisation. And the more we can make it normal for use as academics and as AP, we call it APT staff, other assistant staff, the more we can make the use of portfolios normal, the more that it just becomes part of everyday practice. So that's a little bit about what I'm showing you today. And I've done something a little bit, um, well different but not different because we're here at a Pebble Pad conference, right? So I've made it into a workbook. <laughs> so that's why I can't stand over here and click. So sorry that I'm not really hiding behind the computer but I need to be close. So I'm going to give you three examples of using Pebble for professional development. Our first example is for our PPR or performance review cycle that most, I guess most institutions will, would go through. One of the first things I actually did when I started on the implementation project, project was to make templates that were able to be used directly from our PPR guidelines handbook. Because let's face it, when you're trying to use something for the first time, you don't really make sense of it until you do something real. It's that authentic exp experiential learning. So I couldn't really make sense of Pebble myself until I made something that was real inside of it. And what I made was PPR templates for our entire CSALT. CSALT is our Centre for Support of Teaching and Learning. Um, learning and Teaching. So I made templates that uh, mimicked the PPR guidelines handbook and then I made a little, I'm thinking back three cycles ago, so I think at that time it was little videos um, to show the team how to put their portfolios together because at the time I didn't know that workbooks existed. So I only knew about templates and you work with what you've got, right? So I made five or whatever it was, different ones, and said this is how you put it all together and this is how you make your CV and this is how you do this and this is how you do that. So it was open to wide interpretation and uh, you know, people got it and it was for my team, it was for, it was most of the, most of them it was their first experience using Pebble. And then the templates turned into a workbook once I found out they existed. I was like, oh wow, this would be really easy in a workbook. So let's do that. Uh, so we did. So I'm going to take you through what that looks like. The second example Oh, sorry, before I tell you that, the HR, well, a few people mentioned yesterday that th this is a really, you know, good idea and something that they want their institutions to do, but HR, right? So <laughs> we had talked with HR back in, I don't know, the first year of our implementation, but our project mandate and our project funding was really centred on students, so we couldn't necessarily be seen by the powers that be to be putting a lot of time and effort into staff use. We really had to focus on student use and kind of this was on the side. However, as we were needing to normalise um, Pebble into mainstream use and, and the project became moving from project to operational, um, we, we said to HR, look, this is a really good way that we could integrate across the university and make it you know, an option for people. We've done it for three cycles here in our department and what do you think? And they said, yeah, yeah, great idea, let's do a bit more of this and a bit more of that. And we, we did a couple of workshops for staff, open to staff to come to. But at the time there was uncertainty, we were still in project mode and, and it wasn't really, yes, this is staying, you know, Priscilla's staying or there's someone that's going to be here. So people were a little bit reluctant to jump on board because they didn't really know how things were going to pan out. So now that that's happened, it's very interesting how things come full circle. Uh, HR have come to us and they said, oh, we're trying to find a system that might do a bit of this and it might do a bit of that and we wouldn't track this and we've got reflections. And we've got, we're like, well, yeah, we can do all that. And the HR lady literally, like, she's like, oh, like, I thought this would be too good to be true. This is my wish list and you can make it all happen. Yeah, it's like, oh my God, like the excitement was through the roof. So we are just embarking now on that stage, which is like, you know, you just have to keep treading water sometimes and eventually they realise that you're there. So there's a little, little something to keep you going there. All right, so a second example, um, one of the paramedics 
uh, coordinators came to me and said that they wanted to capture the professional development in their sessional staff. So I don't know what that, do you call that here in the UK, sessional staff as well, like your tutors that just come on board and teach for a semester or RAs I guess maybe in the US? Adjuncts. 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 Yep, sorry, terminology. Divided by common language we all are, aren't we? Um, so we wanted to capture professional development in sessionals and for sessional staff to be able to do this and to have some evidence of their teaching portfolio, what a great, great resource for them. How valuable is that? I was sessional for nine or ten semesters. Like, what a great thing for me to have been able to collect along the way. I mean, I've retrospectively done it, but God, it took ages. So being able to do it at the time would be excellent. So I'll show you what they've thought of in there. And then um, the dear OLT, we... Um, we have a grants and awards um, area and we support applications for OLT learning and teaching citations and traditionally staff struggle with the evidence gathering and and the polishing and, and you know all of that sort of stuff so we've built a portfolio a workbook sorry where staff can um, build it, gather it. I mean, obviously they're not going to present it in a portfolio yet, but that's probably not too far down the track. Um, but this is the scaffolding. So you put it all together in here, you, you gather everything and you keep it in your workbook and then it pops out as a citation application by magic. No. <laughs> so without further ado, here is the PPR workbook. So there's a little bit of an intro. I haven't done all the replace images since we got the banners working again, but so um, why are we doing it this way? How do you use it? So a bit of self-help inside because we're not going to assume that everyone knows how to do it. However, we can assume that if they can find it, they can probably fill it in. So no one taught anyone how to play Pokemon, right? But they got there anyway. <laughs> Alright, so we've described what they're doing, given some screenshots about what they have to do. How do you attach your CV, which is part of our um, PPR. What's it going to look like? Okay, so that's just an overview page. And then there's nothing particularly innovative in the content of this, I must add. It's just taken straight from the HR workbook. So you talk about things like your job description and what are you doing and how well are you doing it. And so, we're, I mean, as you know, you've, you've all seen workbooks and templates, but, you know, lots of scaffolding here, like getting people to think about their answers. So inbuilt, forced reflection, surreptitious. Okay, so we've got a similar thing, job feedback, goals reflection. So last year my goals were how did I do, did I make it, did I make, publish X amount of papers that I thought I would, etc and your future planning, what is it that you want to do in the future. And then we have some specific goals planning. So you're able to then write down each goal. Um, obviously we use the SMART goals, what action does it need, what's your target dates and your performance indicators. So we've put in space for five. Ultimately good practice suggests that five goals in the year of your PPR cycle is enough. But we have, for those overachievers, we have allowed a space here for extra goals to be added through a collection mechanism. So we've released the extra goals template as a standalone and then said if you tag this with whatever the tag is, then it'll be brought into your collection. So that's a way for people to evidence more than, or to write down more than five. Okay, and then the all important, back here, signatures. So you sit with your supervisor and you have a discussion and then we have to evidence the fact that we've done that. So we, we both sign off on that. And then we have to print that page out. Isn't it interesting that records departments still want paper? Like really? Although I'm really happy to say that the, the conversations that we're now having with HR, they're very much like, yeah, no, nah, we're doing away with all of that. We are very happy if this is a, you know, living inside of Atlas and it's going to be there for eons and whatnot. So that satisfies the need for, to have a, a piece of paper for every single employee's signature on it. So imagine the filing system. All right, and then the space there to evidence your job description and your CV. Probably don't need to really show you that, but there you go. So you can attach that in there. So that's the PPR portfolio. So um, stay tuned. It's, it's going to evolve and change as the whole system is being redeveloped from HR. So maybe in two years' time, I'll be showing you a different version. You never know. All right, so the paramedic teaching portfolio. This is very much a learning portfolio for, as I said, paramedic sessional staff and a professional development program. So they decided that there are three stages of the levels of um, 
early academics, I guess, the early career, the consolidating and the developed stages. So they then talk about in like the, the flow chart of this. And this is a little bit basic in, in its look. We, this was originally developed in three and we didn't quite have the features in five and I just haven't had time to come in and redo it in five to make it look like five. Um, so we've got the, obviously you do induction and then what do you do at early career stage? What do you do at consolidating stage? And when are you developed? And then you could go to a grade certain education or further. So that's an overview and then, so they can put their CV and I won't go through that, but there's stuff that walks them through induction. And one of the things that actually is, in my opinion, so they have an induction program worksheet that they have to evidence there and attend sessions as well. I love this feedback section. Oh, look, it's asking me to save. <laughs> I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> Um, so the 360 degree feedback seeking, the nature of this I love, you know, we should all be doing this anyway, I feel, but the fact that this is being really scaffolded for these sessional staff is just so fantastic. Um, so feedback for in, from engaging learners, so, um, and they tell, say here two or more examples of peer and then from academic and then also from CSALT, which is our area. You know, how are these guys engaging in the, the, the practice of learning and teaching as well? So again, scaffolding, where do I get help? Where do I download documents? It's all in here for them. Place for evidence, how to go about your student feedback questionnaire, um, letting them know that it's, you know, it's voluntary and how to, how to ask your students this stuff. So everything's in here. They don't have to go and try to find stuff on six different websites or in, you know, in a, um, intranet or somewhere locked down or whatever. So it's all there. All right, so I just won't expect you to be reading that, but you can see that there's lots of information and evidence areas and areas for further feedback in case you didn't capture all of it there. Then there's um, participation in what we call sessional development days. And we also run foundations of university teaching course. So professional development, where can you find more information, attach evidence and development days and which ones did you go to? So again, it's just all here. It's really well consolidated. And there's maybe one more thing. Oh, you can put in a professional development plan as well and have that signed off. So overall, like that's exciting to me for the paramedics. And then the last thing is the um, teaching awards application workbook. Okay, so it's, as I said earlier, designed to guide through planning and evidence gathering and also supporting the writing process. Our um, grants and awards team run lots of workshops. So the first thing they do is, I mean, there's lots of information. I don't know about any other um, grants and awards areas apart from OLT, so obviously internationally if that doesn't translate, I'm sorry, but there's lots of bulletins that come out and they're coming out all the time, information like you think about this and have to do that. So we've we made um, adaptively released all the bulletins that came out, so each bulletin had information and contact details on what you should be doing and what stage you should be at. Um, and they were adaptively released week to week as the bulletins were coming out. So. Um, reminding people that there's going to be workshops, what topics should we be looking at, etc, etc, and where to get in touch. So that was the bulletins. Timelines and key dates, because we all forget that stuff if we're heavily into like the development process of grants and applications. So there's due date times and when do you get your drafts in, etc. So it's all just here. Again, one-stop shop just saves us so much time and, and that, that cerebral energy that we really want to put into something useful, not having to go and seek out the information. We could make much better grant applications if we don't have to run around for half a day finding out where we've got to find everything. So workshops, so we had lots of different workshop sessions and these are... When the session had run, we were then able to go back and put, I don't think it's in this version, but we could put um, the recording of the session and the... And the um, PowerPoint slides and then areas for notes and reflections from the workshop. So all of what they heard was there and all of what they reflected on was there as well. And then, sorry, this is like show and tell. Um, <laughs> the evidence, this is, this is fun, I think. Um, really well scaffolded, if you, if you can call evidence fun, but we all do, right? Um, so, oh, that's not the fun part. Hang on, one more down. And they have to develop like their learning um, 
philosophy as well. So we've got peer evidence and, and examples of what could be peer, because this is where people get stuck, like, oh, like, and it's the same for students. I mean, we're all the same, right? And when we're trying, particularly when we're evidencing ourselves, it's really difficult, isn't it, to write something critical and reflective about your own practice. So prompts, we all know prompts, where do I start? Like, what could that be? Oh, yeah. A classroom performance review, that's a good idea. So, you know, once you get those little prompts and you can throw it in there. Now, as I said, you might not, this isn't what you submit, but the fact that it's all here means that it all lives in one place and it's consolidated and you've done that thinking. So the hunting and gathering process, the thinking is often the hardest part. So this helps you get through that. Then the self part is where I... Th Thing. Yes, this is where we think about developing a teaching portfolio and a teaching philosophy. I think that that then comes down... We also ask our students, student interviews, informal feedback, results from graduate satisfaction, all sorts of student feedback that we can gather and evidence of student learning as well. And importantly, that there's that word like indicators. How can you really show that this has made a difference? Where are the indicators of where you've impacted student learning? So, um, and some other areas there for evidence. And I think, is that the end? Oh, sorry, here's the teaching philosophy bit. It's really getting angry at me that I haven't saved. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. Okay, so um, why have a teaching philosophy and what is it? And how might you use it? And then here is the scaffolding about how to, like if you said to someone, go and develop a teaching philosophy, like the look on people's face would be like, oh, what do you mean? How much research do I need to do to be able to even complete a teaching philosophy? But what if you just filled in these boxes? Like six of them, I think. What if you just filled that in and then like, ha, huh, look, I've got a teaching philosophy. So again, just this ability to, to, just to really, I'll use the term again, to scaffold the thinking. And I think that that's where the space in a portfolio makes a big difference. And I don't mean physical space, you know what I mean, right? The theoretical space. You're in a safe place and you can play with it and you can develop it and then you can spit it out when you think it's good enough. But you've had space within here that's really, really succinct. So um, that, I believe... Oh, and the writing up, this is just a text box. I probably couldn't, shouldn't have even gone to this click, but anyway, it's just, yeah, practice your writing up here. And what they can also do is submit this, obviously, into a workspace where all of the mentors, all of the um, OLT citation winners previously, well, not all of them, but some of them come back as mentors, and they can come in like an external examiner or, or as a manager in the workspace and just drop in. Just drop in on how's your writing going and give some feedback and, and and obviously then have that feedback loop going and then they can drop in in the next week or after the next workshop etc so um, I believe that that's it